Okay, hey everyone, what's up? Today I'm gonna be doing a how to guide and how to shoot video on a Canon T3i. I'm gonna be making another video as well on how to shoot video on a Nikon D5100 and 5200, but it's gonna be mostly focused on the 5100. So the reason why I'm making these videos is because my company is starting to grow and whenever I'm training someone you to shoot video with me, there's a set of guidelines and rules that everyone should know when shooting video, especially if you're becoming a photographer going into video. Um, there's a lot of things and rules that video have that you must follow in order to get good image results. So we're using the Canon T3i right here, very rec good recommendable camera. I get really good results off of it. And um, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is your, your display screen, which is the first thing you're always gonna look at. You're not looking through here. This is just only just for a photo. If you have a mirrorless camera like the G7, GH4, or a7s then you can look through here but since this is a dslr there's a mirror inside of it so this is what this is exactly used for so majority of the time you're gonna be looking at your screen here so first thing we talk about is iso iso is how much light the camera will uh, bring in like how much it will brighten up the image from inside the camera um, it's kind of more digital if you think about it um, there's other key roles to it. So think of this as like a square, this is for a video. So uh, down here we have the exposure meter. This is the camera saying how much light it's going in. If you go to the right a lot more, it's overexposed. If you're going plus three, it's more exposed. If you go toward negative three, it's becoming more underexposed. You wanna be in the middle. So the light meter is your best friend. The next thing I'm going to talk about is aperture. Aperture is the lens of your camera and how much light it lends in. Um, you want to be able to have it as wide as possible, it, um, but on some occasions where you want the aperture closed when you're outside, where you don't have to pull focus as often, um, you would want to close the aperture all the way. But it's preferably best to have a camera with a very big aperture, 1.8 or 1.2. Is really nice to have as a lens so you got to have that in mind when you're shopping for lenses that when you start off with the kit lens you're gonna get really bad results till you get a lens like this which is the which this is the um uh, nikon no the canon 50 millimeter 1.8 um, it is known as the nifty 50. and the next thing we're talking about is shutter speed this is shooting at 60. uh shutter speed is how the image is so if you notice how my hands all blurry this is being shot in 60. if i were to go ahead and bring up the shutter speed my hands a lot more smoother see and then once you bring it down to 60 it is a lot more you know uh, blurred but that's the effect you want with 30 fps if you're shooting 60 then you can change the shutter speed so was as we get on our, our canon camera here uh, i'm going to teach you guys a few cool neat tricks so down here is obviously your sd card scene it's reading and recording you have such things as white balance control or you're able to adjust the zoom dials right here I'm gonna teach you guys the first bare essentials before getting into anything, anything more advanced. This video is very bare, uh, bare bones and basic. So this is your shutter button up here. You want to know about uh, you want to know about the shutter's button, um, the the um, the control. This is um, the, the dial here. You want to know this one the most. This is the thing that your hands will be on like at least 90% of the time with this camera besides focusing. So this, when you're not touching any other button besides the the shutter gear. This is just for controlling the shutter speed. That's what I just did earlier. So if I want to change this to, to you know, uh, to you know, 30, I could bring out 30, or I could bring it back up to 125, or I could just keep it at 60. So that's what that's for. You want to know that that's just for shutter speed when you're not pressing any other button. So this is usually default for a lot of cameras. When you go ahead and you want to control aperture, bring you know, let less less light into the the sensor through the lens you hold down the av button and you hit the shutter button and you're able to darken the image as much as you can so when you hold down the av button it just controls the aperture um, you know it's telling it's telling the lens to close the aperture ring which is inside the lens which i'll make an example here very poorly so when it's closed all the way it's letting less light in when you open it up when you open the aperture it lets in a lot more light in so that's what the av button is hold down the av button and the, the dial at the same time you control it and it opens the aperture okay so the next thing you also need to know too is the iso button is directly behind the the dial here so you hold down the iso and it allows you to control the the iso with the shutter with the, with the dial so i keep on saying shutter dial but this is a multi-purpose one so you set it to 100. so that's the three things you need to know when using this camera 
is that you have to, no matter what, in 30 FPS per second, you have to shoot in 60 in shutter. The widest aperture you possibly can. And it has to be properly lit. And in between both of the ones at max, and um, your ISO will dictate on how much, how bright the image is going to get when you're recording. So we got that cleared out of the way. That's the I've essentially that's all you really need to know for video when you're shooting in manual mode. So the next thing I'm going to be showing here is how to set up your microphone. Now this is very very important not to shoot in auto. The whole point of this video you're watching here is not to shoot in auto. So you see here, the there's the mic levels. So let's say it's too loud, right? You can hear it's peaking, it's peaking. So you go to uh, record levels and if you bring it down, let's tap it again. So let's just bring it down all the way because we don't want the mic to, you know, peak. So see that it, it's, it's slowly going down. So I have to bring it down all the way, just a little. See, it's not really peaking because I bought down the mic levels by a lot. And depending on your microphone, uh, this is the Audio Technica uh, shotgun mic here. There is a telephoto mode and a manual mode. I don't know if you can really dis distinct that, but there you go. But you see here, there is a telephoto mode and a normal mode. I usually have it set to telephoto for when you're plugging this directly into a camera, but when you're using an H4N, it's uh, not really recommended to have it in telephoto. So with all that, this is honestly, this video you're watching here is like for people that kind of know already how to use a camera, but they really don't know exactly how to use it in, in a video environment. Uh, there's other things also like color profiles and whatnot. Um, you know, you can go here and you go into settings and you can go to picture style. You could set things such as standard portrait new, new user to find, you know, I could set the neutral as well. There's different, you know, profiles as well to give you different, to give you a uh, different um, image qualities when you're shooting video. You can even do black and white if you wanted to. But this is a very bare bones video. If you're new about photography and you watch this video and you want to learn, learn about video, this video will be a lot more helpful. But these are for those out there who kind of already have a general idea on how to use a DSLR. And well, this is just for those people out there that I'm hiring. So that's all you guys, this is Greg from Legacy Media. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you guys on the next one.